What you think you know about black holes might be incorrect. The groundbreaking theory proposed by the brilliant scientist Albert Einstein may have been disproven. Dr. Riker, a renowned mathematician from New Zealand, challenged Einstein's concept of black hole singularity in 1963, asserting that the point where a black hole's mass and gravity converge does not actually exist. This contradicts Einstein's belief in singularity. So, if singularity is absent, does that mean black holes themselves are a deception? Welcome to Spaceverse. Ever wondered why quantum mechanics struggles to explain gravity in the cosmos? Join us for a cosmic exploration into this intriguing mystery. Subscribe for mind-blowing insights and celestial wonders. Let's journey through the Spaceverse together. In essence, the singularity defines a black hole, and its intense gravity creates the event horizon that pulls objects inward. Without singularity, is the existence of black holes a falsehood? This raises questions about the legitimacy of the black hole image released by NASA in 2019. Can black holes subsist with an event horizon but without singularity, devoid of any gravitational source? Alternatively, is there an alternate element within them generating their powerful gravity? If so, what remains concealed within black holes? To unravel these mysteries, delving into the foundation of this enigma is imperative the general theory of relativity by Einstein, where concepts like black holes, singularity, wormholes, and dark matter originated. It is crucial not to overlook this section, as a misconception about the correlation between gravity and the fabric of space-time is widespread among 95% of individuals. The conventional way we perceive gravity, where an object in space-time curves due to its weight, is fundamentally flawed upon closer examination. This visualization utilizes gravity to explain gravity, rendering it an inaccurate depiction of space-time curvature. In reality, gravity arises from curvature, and curvature is not a result of gravity. This distinction is pivotal, and understanding it dispels the common misconception about the relationship between gravity and the curvature of space-time. Consider a bucket filled with water, and when you place a ball inside, the water level rises in response to the space the ball occupies, Archimedes' principle illustrates this, attributing the rise in water level to gravity. Similarly, when an object is introduced into space-time, the more space it occupies, the more it influences the surrounding space-time, creating a curvature. Scientists propose that this curvature is responsible for the gravitational pull exerted by the object. As per the general theory of relativity, all objects, including you, me and a ball, are initially in a state of free fall moving along straight lines. However, when a massive object curves the space-time around it, the objects in this curved space-time experience a change from straight free fall to curved free fall. Due to this curvature, the direction of the fall aligns towards the center of mass, resulting in an attractive force that we recognize as gravity. An alternative analogy, the river model of general relativity, offers a simplified perspective. In this model, when a curvature forms in our space-time, objects do not sink into a pit. Rather, the pit itself falls into the curvature because the space-time below it begins to fall along with the objects, creating a gravitational effect. This model provides an accessible way to grasp the complex concept of how massive objects influence the curvature of space-time, leading to the phenomenon we perceive as gravity. Essentially, when a curvature forms in space-time, it behaves like a waterfall drawing objects into its flow and causing them to fall into the curvature. Analogously, approaching the edge of a waterfall accelerates the flow. If you're in a boat and need to avoid falling into the waterfall, you have to accelerate the boat in the opposite direction as you get closer to the edge. This may result in moving backward, but from a third-person perspective, you remain visible. In the case of a black hole, a slight error near its edge, the event horizon, can be critical. Typically, the curvature near the black hole's event horizon causes the flow of space-time to approach the speed of light. Consequently, anything in the universe, except light, cannot move in the opposite direction. This explains why objects tend to fall into a black hole. Now, the significance of the event horizon becomes apparent. However, the term black hole is coined because even light cannot escape it. This implies that the flow of space-time around the event horizon must surpass the speed of light including information transfer. 
Once an object or light enters the black hole, it cannot exceed the speed of light to escape. This presents a paradox, as nothing in the universe is known to travel faster than the speed of light. This paradox challenges the core statement of the general theory of relativity. In summary, the assumption at the core of general theory of relativity breaks down within the context of black holes, leading to peculiar outcomes. This particular issue is termed singularity by scientists, signifying a critical point. However, not all scientists concurred on this concept, and one physicist challenged the idea of singularity, perceiving it as a significant flow. This physicist questioned the foundational assumption that all black holes are stationary. He pointed out the inconsistency by considering the basic law of physics known as the law of conservation of momentum. According to this law, any rotating body, including a black hole formed from a massive star's explosion, should continue to rotate unless an external force acts upon it or it collides with another object. This insight raised doubts in the physicist's mind, leading him to reject the notion of singularity. The traditional explanation asserts that singularity is formed when a black hole is stationary, with only its event horizon and rotation. This supposedly causes objects to fall towards a single point within the event horizon, resulting in an infinite pressure of gravity at that point. This critical point is what scientists term as singularity. However, the physicist's skepticism stemmed from the understanding that, according to the conservation of momentum, black holes should inherently possess rotation. This challenges the conventional idea that singularity occurs only in the absence of black hole rotation. Now that we understand how singularities are formed in black holes, it's evident that black holes are not stationary. They rotate. Consequently, point singularities cannot exist within rotating black holes. When objects cross the event horizon of a rotating black hole, they are drawn towards the center while simultaneously orbiting around it. This motion resembles the bikes in a well of death where the rapid rotation prevents them from falling directly to a point. Instead, they perpetually orbit in a ring-like motion within the depths of the black hole. This perspective suggests that the mass within a rotating black hole doesn't concentrate at a central point, but rather in the motion of ring. In essence, singularity, according to this argument, doesn't manifest as a point but as the perpetual motion of ring. This revelation challenges Einstein's theory proving it incorrect based on this fundamental fact about rotating black holes. However, it's crucial to ponder whether this explanation, particularly in the context of the Kerr case, renders all calculations based on Einstein's general relativity useless. The answer is no. Despite these revisions, the practical applications of Einstein's theory, such as the Chepia system, remain valid. The accuracy of our Chepia satellites, located approximately 20,000 kilometers above Earth's surface, depends on the time dilation principle of the general theory of relativity. Due to the gravitational potential differences, the clocks on these satellites run faster than those on Earth, showcasing the enduring relevance and accuracy of Einstein's contributions to modern physics. Certainly, the accuracy of the Chepia system, which relies on calculations involving relativity, exemplifies the enduring relevance of Einstein's general theory of relativity. The speed of clocks on GPS satellites is adjusted using these calculations to synchronize with Earth's time precisely. This meticulous adjustment ensures that real-time data is obtained, and we don't end up receiving morning traffic data when traveling in the evening. Despite the advancements and refinements, the current understanding of the general theory of relativity remains highly valuable. Einstein's theory, while unable to predict phenomena like the interior of singularities or events before the Big Bang, continues to provide accurate predictions and explanations for many aspects of the universe. The introduction of the concept of the new ring singularity can be seen as an enhancement or upgrade to the original general theory of relativity. As we progressed from using Newton's gravity for rocket launches to Einstein's general theory of relativity for phenomena like gravitational lensing, Reuker's theory now contributes to our understanding of the interior of black holes. The quest for a complete understanding of gravity now turns toward quantum gravity and its true nature. The challenge lies in bridging the gap between quantum mechanics and gravity, addressing the fundamental problem faced by the scientific community. The particles inside a singularity exhibit quantum effects, necessitating a theory that can comprehensively grasp the interplay between gravity and quantum mechanics. The pursuit of this unifying theory remains one of the fundamental challenges in modern physics. And that's it. Thank you for exploring the mysteries of the Spaceverse with us.
If you enjoyed this cosmic journey, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more interstellar adventures. Until our next cosmic rendezvous, keep looking up to the stars.